19 minutes before 7. This is Information Morning on CBC. Up next, a story out of recent numbers from Statistics Canada. StatsCan data indicate that suicide rates are going up in this province. And that's something that has motivated our next guest to call for the province to update its suicide prevention strategy. Dr. Simon Sherry is a professor in the Department of Psychology and Neuroscience at Dalhousie. He treats people who have depression, personality disorders, and addiction, and he also researches suicidal behavior. Dr. Sherry, welcome to Information Morning. Thank you for having me here this morning. So could you tell us about the most recent numbers from Statistics Canada? They are bleak. There are a number of data points that come together to suggest that Nova Scotia's suicide rate is on the rise. Between 2000 and 2012, in fact, our suicide rate rose faster than any other province in Canada. And what this means is our suicide rate went from being below the national average to now being above the national average. To offer you a point of contrast, in 2000 there were 75 suicides in Nova Scotia, and that's already a concerningly high number. But by 2016 there were 134 suicides in our province, and there were similar numbers in 2015, for example. And what this represents, if you contrast these two numbers in a statistical sense, is a 44% increase in our suicide rate. How would you characterize that pattern? Alarming and also ultimately unnecessary in that suicide is preventable. We need to smash the myth in our province that suicide is not preventable. If you look at what suicide is, it's often misunderstood as a single isolated event. But research will tell us that suicide is often part of a long, wider process. That process involves almost always some sort of mental health problem, along with periods of suicide ideation, suicide attempts, threats, gestures, and so forth. And so as part of this long and drawn-out process, there are many opportunities to intervene. What I think is very unfortunate is that we don't have a coordinated government-led effort in our province to reduce our suicide rate. So what can you tell us about Nova Scotia's suicide prevention strategy? I can tell you that it's badly out of date that it's drawing on evidence that is more than 20 years old. And because it is out of date, we're not making use of recent, effective, high-quality evidence to prevent suicide. I can tell you that our provincial suicide prevention strategy lacks specific funds dedicated to reaching specific goals on specific deadlines. I can also tell you that it would be very possible to publicly declare a goal to reduce our suicide rate by 20% and to achieve that in our province by implementing even the basics of a reasonable evidence-based suicide prevention strategy. So can you tell us about a couple of the um, um, features of the suicide prevention strategy that are out of date, that are no longer best practice? Yes. I can. Um, let's frame this in terms of what we could be doing in light of what we know. Mm -hmm. We need an active effort in our province to limit access to common means of dying by suicide. Now, many people believe that if, for example, you put up a bridge barrier that prevents people from jumping off a bridge, they simply go home and die by suicide through alternative means. But many studies have now accumulated to tell us that when you limit access to common means of dying by suicide, you actually lower suicide rates in a given population. That needs to be somewhere near the core of our provincial suicide prevention strategy. A second vitally important 
pillar in a provincial suicide prevention strategy would be very closely tracking and very strongly supporting people who present in our healthcare system who are in some ways suicidal. Mm -hmm. Because our mental health care system and our overall health care system is so overworked and underfunded, people are falling through the cracks. And so we're missing critically important opportunities to intervene because we're not able to closely follow up with people following a period of suicide ideation or a suicide attempt. We also definitely need to be giving Nova Scotians greater access to medications and psychotherapies that have been repeatedly shown to reduce suicidal thoughts, behaviors, and the associated mental illnesses. There are also many other evidence-based means of prevention that are just not being implemented in our province as part of a funded, coordinated strategy that involves actual goals and real timelines. When you say um, one of the things that we should be doing and that evidence supports us doing one strategy should be to track people who present who are suicidal, which would, I'm sure some people could apply that to some cases that have been um, publicly in the media recently and not so recently. Um, how would we track them? Evidence has shown that something as basic as reaching out repeatedly as an expression of care and interest through a letter when someone has presented as suicidal, helps reduce the suicide rate. Now, I'd like to think that in a country like Canada and a province like Nova Scotia, we could do better than that. But it's very possible to provide people with aftercare when they've been identified within our healthcare system as suicidal. We could filter them into an intervention that's been known to reduce suicidal thoughts and suicidal behaviors. Even if they ended up on a wait list, we could reach out, follow up, provide additional hope, provide additional assessment while people are stuck waiting. But mostly, when people enter our healthcare system and they're suicidal, they shouldn't be released dispassionately into our community. They should be identified as a very important patient within that system, tracked, followed up, and then connected to any one of a number of medications or interventions that we know are effective in reducing suicide. Like, like what? For example, if you had borderline personality disorder, that is a not uncommon personality disorder with an alarmingly high suicide rate, you could be connected to the Dialectical Behavior Therapy Program here in Halifax, and this is one effective evidence-based treatment in reducing suicide. If you had a bipolar disorder and you were in need of medication, you could be very effectively supported in getting on a medication like lithium, which is shown to be effective in not only treating a bipolar illness but also the associated suicidality. The answer to that very good question is often going to vary on what ails a given individual. But we know, based on science and based on successes in other provinces and countries, that we can connect people to interventions that change away, change around the way they think and the way they behave when it comes to suicide. Oftentimes when somebody presents to a healthcare system thinking, suicidal thoughts or having engaged in suicidal behaviors, they are very ambivalent about dying. And there's an opportunity to intervene and to help them with the problems in their health or the problems in their world that are creating an often unbearable sense of pain or hopelessness that triggers these suicidal thoughts and behaviors. If there's evidence to show that following up with someone who has expressed suicidal thoughts or tracking someone, treating that as, you know, as you said, uh, a special circumstance, a special person in the system, if that shows that that is effective in reducing instances of um, people taking their own lives, what what in the way of us doing that? An effective suicide prevention strategy is going to be the coming together of mental health care, attention to public health, 
but the missing piece here is political will. If our government were to decide to reduce the rate, since could do so years, Quebec would represent an example. In 1998, Quebec decided that its suicide rate was unacceptably high. And at that point, it launched a province-wide, government-led, well-funded initiative to reduce suicide rates. Since then, suicide rates have gone down by 30%, and very importantly, suicide rates in Quebec have gone down by 50% among youth. It's very possible to make these changes. We have other examples from England, Scotland, and Finland of similar success stories. What's missing here is political will to implement what we know about the prevention of suicide. All right, Dr. Sherry, thanks very much for your background today. I appreciate the time. I'm glad we're having this important conversation. Simon Sherry is a clinical psychologist and a prof in the Department of Psychology and Neuroscience at Dow. And uh, by the way, I should mention, if you're in distress and you think you need some help, you can turn to your family doctor. There's also a mental health mobile crisis team in Nova Scotia, which you can reach at one 429 8167 from all across the province. You can also um, Google the Kids Help Phone. They have online chats at certain times of the week. Or you can call the Kids Help Phone toll-free, 1-800-668-6868. And the website suicideprevention.ca can direct you to a crisis center.